on Friday afternoon, UConn kicks off its NCAA tournament run, and they'll be starting with with Stetson. So joining me today to help uh, preview his team a little bit is the, the head coach of Stetson, uh, Donnie Jones. So Coach Jones, welcome to the podcast. Hey, it's great to be with you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. I, I've got to say the Atlantic Sun had to be one of my favorite conferences to follow throughout the year, and especially your conference tournament, probably the craziest one in all of college basketball, this conference tournament season. Take me through what it felt like for your team to be able to withstand the madness of the Atlantic Sun tournament this year and come out with that uh, with that bid. Yeah, I tell you what, it was uh, it was very competitive. You know, obviously there was a lot of close games throughout the season, so we knew there was a lot of parity coming into conference tournament, and and obviously we knew how important it was to get a, a seed uh, at home. We had the first two rounds at home, we finished second, so um, the you know there was a lot of upsets in the first round. You know, the first seed, second seed, and the third seed all got beat in the first game. So um, we knew we just had to try to take care of our home court and. Got a really good Jacksonville team in the second round, uh, a really tough team in Queens. The first round, we battled, pulled that one out. Jacksonville came in uh, already uh, beating Kennesaw State, the reigning champion of the A-Sun, and then turned around beating EKU <clears throat> at their place, who was the number one seed. They were playing extremely well. Uh, had us down 10 in the game, and uh, we rallied back with four to go. Stephon Swenson made some big plays, and – and obviously, we were fortunate to win that one, which set up the championship game. And uh, I lost the P team and played really well. When you look at you know what your team was able to accomplish, you get to the NCAA tournament for the first time, both from your career as a head coach and for Stetson as a program. What what, what has the past week been like for you? You know, now that you've locked up that bid and it, it's real, it's happening. Yeah, it's been incredible. Uh, you know, it's like being invited to the ball, right? So I get a chance to go to the dance and. Uh, you know, I've been there as an assistant 14 times, but as a head coach, first time. And so it is a lot different. Uh, and it's really fun to be able to take a bunch of people who hasn't been there. Uh, yeah. You know, our, school, our administration, our fans, our players, the excitement all week has been nothing but one big celebration. So take me through uh, a little bit of a, a preview of your team here. You, you mentioned Stefan Swenson a, a little while ago, obviously kind of the guy who who leads your team there, the, the point guard who can get everything done. Um, we know Jalen Blackman, he put up what, 43 in that championship game. Right. So th those are the two guys who initially come to mind. Take me through that, that duo in your backcourt and, and what they bring to your team. Yeah, it starts with those two. Those guys are both veterans. Stefan Swenson, thousand point scorer, uh, all time lead and assist. Uh, guy at our school. Uh, he's been a four-year starter. He's been a leader of our team. Jalen Blackman, you know, it's his second year transferred in uh, from Grand Canyon. Uh, newcomer of the year, first year, first team all leg. This year, first team all leg. Led our leg in scoring. Terrific backcourt, could score. Uh, and then uh, Alex Olgsby, we call him AO. Uh, he's really played well. He's a transfer to last year was his first year. He played a role off the bench, but this year has been a frontline guy, two-way player, tough, can make shots, can really score the ball, uh, and a uh, great leader as well. Uh, the other spot, we played a freshman. You know, we we had an unusual situation, you know, last three weeks ago, we lost a veteran power forward in Josh Smith, 6'8", mm -hmm. 220, uh, second ACL in at less than 12 months. So that that really hurt our depth yeah. in the front court. So we played a freshman named Tristan Gross, who's been terrific, 6'6", six, six, uh, who's kind of played the four-guard system for us. And, um, and then the last one who starts is Alban Gadaretzi, 6'11", uh, center from uh, Belgium, same place Stefan Swenson's from. He's a junior, and he's had a terrific year as well. He's, he's a shot blocker, uh, shot really high field goal percentage for us. Uh, first big guy off the bench, Trayton Thompson, a transfer from Minnesota, seven foot, uh, who's done a terrific job for us. And John Carlo Valdez, that's been the other guy's played some minutes for us at the guard spot. Who is a senior as well? So give me give me your initial thoughts. You, you're watching the selection show. You, you see, you get the overall number one seed in, in UConn in the matchup. But uh, what's what's the first thought going through your mind at that point? <laughs> well, uh, total respect first of all. Uh, got a lot of respect for Dan Hurley. Uh, he's an incredible coach. His family, uh, incredible history. Uh, you know, I've played as assistant at, I mean, as a head coach at UCF. I came yeah. to stores. Several times, obviously, when I was an assistant, 2000, I think it was 11, we played in the Battle of Atlantis. We had yeah, a victory. We, we don't talk about that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to live in the past, okay? <laughs> but, uh, 
But so, you know, I, I know the respect for UConn, and right now their team is terrific. I've watched them a lot this year just as a fan, uh, watching what they do and how they play. Uh, they got the total team. Um, they're probably, uh, if I had to pick one in the bracket before I was in the bracket, uh, I would have picked UConn probably to win it all. So they're that talented and that good. It's the best time of the year. And no, I'm not just talking about March Madness. It's Easter kielbasa season over at Martin Russell's Meats in New Britain. Martin Russell's is making their famous Easter kielbasa recipe now until March 31st. You can find your favorite Russell products in your local Connecticut grocery store or at their retail store in New Britain. And if you do head to the retail store, check out pickuprosols.com to place your order ahead of time to skip the Easter week lines. Out of state, the Russell family can ship their products to you at martinrosal.com. Use code Jared now through March 31st for 10% off the subtotal on either of those two sites. Now go support a UConn fan-owned business. It came out Sunday night that you'd be playing UConn. I'm sure you, you you and your staff quickly dive into taking a look at this UConn team. What have, what have been kind of a couple things that have stood out to you initially, just kind of taking a look at this team at a, at a high level? Unbelievably well-coached. Um, they execute. Um, they don't beat themselves. Uh, they got a lot of depth. They got great guard play. Uh, they got... Uh, you know, two guys at every position. Uh, they got five guys, a double figure scoring, very similar to those back to back national championship teams we had uh, that that had five guys and double figures. And you know what? They they run their stuff and they don't beat themselves and they play with a, a great fundamental approach. There's a reason that they're probably one of the most efficient teams in the country. I, I'm curious to get your thoughts, you know, coming from a, a mid-major like Stetson, especially the, the past few years in the tournament, we've seen these, you know, 14, 15, 16 seeds, you know, pull off these upset wins in the NCAA tournament. I mean, your team this year went in and beat UCF. How, what do you think the level of parity in college basketball is at this time? Because it seems like really anyone can give anyone a game at this point. Yeah, you know, it's, you know, the NBA, you play best of seven, you know, college, yeah. you play 40 minutes. And so, you know, a team can go in and, uh, you know, a lot of these kids now, you know, are older. Uh, they've played against a lot of good teams. They don't get intimidated so quick. And, you know what, sometimes guys just go in, go in and they play loose. You know, there's, you know, we're a team, we're just, we're playing with great freedom. Uh, yeah. You know, for us to get in there and have a chance to play against that level of play is, uh, is a great opportunity for our program. I know it's always special to get to, you know, not only be in the tournament, but get to travel, go through the experience of being it. What, what, what's the week like for your team uh, as you head up to Brooklyn for this game? Yeah, we're still kind of waiting for our time to leave here. They haven't set that. I think we'll take out of here on Wednesday. We just finished up practice here today. And, uh, you know, we've been practicing since last Monday. So we've had a week off. So yeah. it'll be almost uh, 12 days uh, that we've played before we play on Friday. So uh, just, just pacing ourselves here uh, till we get up into uh, New York and, uh, you know, get to the game. Yeah. Uh, I'll wrap with this one for you. And you, and you mentioned it a, a little bit earlier. You were on that Florida staff that, that won back-to-back -back, uh, national championships. We haven't seen a team do it since then. UConn now has had a lot of talk of that being a possibility this year. What was it like being in that position heading into the NCAA tournament? So maybe fans can get a perspective of, what a team is feeling like at this point in that type of situation. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, Billy Donovan, give him credit. It starts with the head coach and goes down to the assistants. Uh, just the approach uh, day by day, being able to keep your team locked in uh, to regardless of who you're playing uh, is one is you want to play to your level, not the level of your opponent. And every matchup's different. Uh, every game's going to be harder than it's ever been uh, the first year. How you how you won last year will be completely different. How you win this year, it'll be much harder. It's just the way it is because everybody's trying to take you down. And uh, and your players, coaches know that, and we prepare and we worry about everybody we play and respect it. But players sometimes get caught up in the, the jersey and yeah. they don't play at the same level until they think they can just turn it on. And that's how you get stung in this tournament. I, I'm curious because as you go through the regular season, I remember those Florida teams in every one of those games, I feel like down the stretch was, was must, must watch TV. Everyone was tuning in to see, you know, are the Gators going to have a chance to do it? Then you get to the tournament. What point did, you know, do you feel extra pressure? Did you as a staff at that point heading into the tournament, you know, knowing that you were having these repeat talks around you? Yeah, I think there's always pressure, you know, but it depends on how you take pressure. You know, we've always talked about pressure being opportunity. Yeah. And I think 
there's a difference. And so uh, pressure is when you're not prepared. And I think we were always prepared. Uh, it's just, you know, what could we control is the unexpected. And that's getting against the team that just made everything, made tough plays, uh, injuries, foul problems. Uh, there's a lot of things can go wrong and uh, in games. So I think just being able to keep your guys locked in and understand we have to win those uh, certain things down the stretch uh, in these close games. Well, Coach, I, I really appreciate you taking a few minutes. I, I know it's a really busy week for you guys, an exciting week. Congrats on, on the season that you've had, and uh, best of luck. Yeah, no, I appreciate you having me. Thank Anytime. you. Thank you.